Hi, in today's video, we're gonna discuss how we can use useHook form library to manage our forms. We're gonna learn how we can register our forms using hooks, how we can add some default values, how we can perform form validation and even use third-party libraries for advanced validation. At the end, we're gonna see how we can integrate UI libraries like MUI into form hooks. So let's go. Go with Floba. Okay, in my project, in the app component, I have three input fields. The first one is username, password, and submit. Now let's see how we can use React hook form to add some validation to this form and at the same time how to submit it. The first thing which we need to do obviously is to install the package itself. So let's run npm install react dash hook dash form. And once the installation has been completed, we have this library available in our project. In order to get access to React Hook Form API, we need to import, obviously, a hook. So the first hook that we need to import, and pretty much the only hook, is use form hook. From React Hook Form. Now, before we register our fields, I want to add type definition to our fields and to our form. So let's add an interface and uh, let's name it as interface form input. And here I want to set the username to be a type of string and I want password to be type of string as well. Now to register our form, we first need to initialize our hook. So let's call it use form hook and we need to pass in the type definition of our form as well. We don't have to, but it's a nice thing to have. And what this hook does, it returns back a callback function. So let's destructure the object. And inside of this object, we have access to this register callback function. Using this uh, callback function, we'll register our fields. So how we do that is just on the field itself. We just open up a brackets and we call this method or actually a function and we provide a name of the field that we want to register. For this one, we want to call it a user name. And this function returns back properties which are get injected inside of this input to be registered. So we need to destructure what this register function is returning back. And we should do the same for the second field. So let me copy this code, paste it here and we want to rename this one to be a password. And with this, we have registered our fields. Next, in order to see the values of the fields that we have, we can use the submit function. So the function name is handle submit, like so. Now we can use this function and pass it on submit form event. So let's add on submit, and let's just pass in this handle submit function. And this handle submit function is expecting a new function and it's passing all the values from this form to that new function so that you can handle it there. So let's name that new function as on submit. Similarly, and now let's create it here on top. So const on submit. And like I said, this function returns back or receives back data from the form. And we just want to console log this data like so. But as you can see, TypeScript is complaining to us that the type of this data is any. So let's give type definition to our function. So this is submit handler type. So we will need to import that submit handler from react hook form. So let me just import it. And we want to provide what is the type of this submit handler. And that is this I form input, which we defined previously. And now the error is gone. So now let's save it and let's open the console log to see what we get. If I type in into username Bob and for the password, let's type in one, two, three and click on submit, we will get the username Bob and password one, two, three. So this is basically an object with the properties of our input fields. How easy was that? Now let me reset our page and let's say that you want to provide a default values to your input fields. 
So inside of our use form hook, we want to provide new object. And the property that we need to use is default values here. And to this property, we provide an object. This object needs to have the same definition as our interface. So we want to provide a username and let's say initial value to be Bob. And we want to provide password as let's say one, two, three. And now you can see if we try to provide a new uh, type, which we haven't defined yet, let's say age, it will give us an error because we haven't defined this. But also at the same time, if we want to assign a value, different value, invalid value. So here we have a string and if we add a number, it will give us an error. Type number is not assignable to type string. So let me revert back this to a string. And if we refresh our application here, you can see that we have initial value set here. Next, let's say that we want to add an input validation. So how we can do that? Here inside of our register function, we provide a new parameter or actually an object. And here you can add some validation rules such as required, min, max, pattern, validate, and similar. So let's say that we want to set the username to be required. So we can set required as true, like so. Now let me refresh our application and let's actually remove the default values as well so that the input fields are empty. So now let's refresh like so. Now if we try to submit the form, you can see that the form is not being submitted and the username input has been focused as you can see here. But at the same time, I want to be more explicit and to tell the user what's happening and why the form is not being submitted. Let's say that we want to pass in username and a password and if we submit now it works so but in this case when it doesn't work and we are, when we are not providing a username we want to provide an error obviously to the user so how we do that so to access our errors we are provided with a form state property form state property and this property has an object and inside of this object we have the errors like so and now what we can do is we can add another paragraph below our input field and we can just access the errors for our username. So how we do that is just type in errors.username.message. But in order to provide the message, we need to add it here. So instead of just adding the boolean, we add a string and we can say this field is required. And now if we save this and if we refresh, if you try to submit, we get this error. This field is required. But if you fill it in, like Bob, one, two, three, if you submit, error goes away and everything looks good. Now let's say that you want to log or actually display some of the values of your input fields or your form elements on your actual page. So there is a function to do that. And the name of this function is called watch. So it works very easily and very simple. So you can just add it inside of your return statement and you just call this function watch and you provide the name of the field that you want to display here. So let's say we want to display a username. It needs to be in a string, username. And now if I refresh and if I start typing something, you can see that it gets rendered on our page. Now let's say that you want to integrate a third party library such as MUI and you want to use their form elements instead of the default ones. So the first thing which you need to do is obviously to install the library itself. And then we will need to import one thing from the React form. And that is a wrapper component called controller. I have also installed MUI on my application. So I want to import their text field. So import text field from at material MUI material like so. Now let me remove the input field that we have created previously. And let's say that we want to use this text field. First, I need to add my wrapper controller here. And in order to connect this controller to a form, I need to pass in a new flag, which is called a control. So inside of our hook here, we have a new function, which is called control. And we just pass this function as a property to our controller, like so. Next, we need to provide a name. So name, 
let it be the same username the next we need to provide a render so where we actually render our text field so render property and this render property has an object and as a parameter here and inside of this object we can access a field itself and what we want to render here is we want to render obviously our text field like so just put it here and what we want to provide is this field in this structure all the properties so the field so basically that we integrate all the properties from this field in this library so that this controller is being connected to this text field additional stuff which we can add is let's say we want to add again the same rules so we can add a property here as rules and you just provide an object and you can say again required and we can provide a message let's say this is required like so now let me save this and let's refresh our application now let me remove the styles which i apply to the body tag here so that we can see this new field so here i added this background color and this color so if i remove them you can see this new input field and now if you try to submit you can see that the validation it still works but if you add bob and password we have successfully integrated this new text field from the mui library and this is how you can integrate additional ui libraries with this react hook form now let's say that you want to perform some more advanced form validation and you want to use some more advanced library such as yap first you need to install that library and i already have and then what you need to do obviously first let's import it so import star from yap and let's give it a name input star as yap from yap like so and now we can create a schema for this so below this form input let's create a new const const schema and let's create new yap object yap object and here let's add a validation for our username and password username so let's set it same to be yap dot string dot required and for the password let's add something more advanced again yep let it make also to be a string but now let's say that we want to set the minimum let me break it down here so that it's more visible so let's say that we want to set it to be minimum eight characters long and let's provide an error let's say password must be eight cars long like so after that let's say that we want to set uh, that it needs to have a number so let's say we need to use regex so let's say matches and for the regex itself we want to set a number so 0 2 9 one of these needs to match it and let's provide an error so actually we need to add a for slash here as well and actually we need to remove the strings because this is a regex and for the error itself let's say password requires a number like so now let me copy paste this again let's say that we want to add a lowercase so a to z now let's say password requires a lowercase letter let's copy paste to have an up uppercase letter as well a z because a uppercase is letter and let's say for the last one that we want to add a special symbol so the regex for that is backslash caret and v and let's set the message to be password requires a symbol like so now we can pass the schema to our input field and we can make this all as required like so now let's add new type definition of our form so let's create a new type and let's call it as form data and here we're going to use the app dot type like so and we just provide 
this schema which we created. So just type of schema. So this is the new type definition that we created. So we can replace existing one. So here instead of the I form input. And how we connect this YAP schema definition is inside of our here use form. We can remove these default values so it's not confusing. And we need to use the property called resolver here. And to this resolver, we need to provide YAP resolver, which is like a wrapper. But we need first to install it. So let me open up a terminal, git bash. So let's just run npm install at hook form for slash resolvers dash yup and just click enter and now that has been installed i can close the terminal and let me import this yup resolver or actually we need to import it manually so let's import it on the top so import yup resolver from at hook form resolvers for slash yup like so and now we need to provide the schema which we define here to our yup resolver here and also you can see here that we have this error because we're not providing this form data to our on submit and let's just update that and the error goes away now the next thing that i want to add i just want to display the errors for the actual password as well so that we can see all the validation that which we have added so let's add a password message and let's remove this watch like so I, we can also remove it from here as well and now let's refresh the application and let's see what we get so if i try to submit we can see that the username is required and password must be eight characters long so let's type in bob and let's type eight numbers one two three four five six seven eight now it says requires a lowercase letter. So let's say A. Now it needs uppercase A and requires a symbol. Let's say star, but it's not fixing. So let me just see the pattern. Okay, I have switched these two values here. Now let's refresh. Let me refresh the application again, Bob, and let's try to submit it here. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight again, lowercase letter uppercase letter symbol and now it works so if i open up console log let's see what we get if i submit it and here's our password and this is how you can integrate advanced validation libraries with react hook form i hope this video was helpful for you to learn a little bit more about react hook forms and how powerful and easy they are to work with and if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.